Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. We are back on the green carpet, episode 10 at Zen Media at T Radio V. It's one of those shows you just don't want to miss. We've got yes. Ronnie Morris from Denmark. Ooh. Yay! Yay! And an Ooh. extraordinary producer, Sharice Renau. Yeah, hello. Hello. We got Yay. a French producer, manager, extraordinary woman. Um, I am so excited. I got to tell you, you know, I've done a bunch of shows. I've been in, involved in Hollywood for a long time, maybe 10 plus years. And I was looking at your photos um, this morning at seven o'clock, and I was just blown <laughs> away. I mean, I've seen a lot of stuff on climate change, mm. um, but when I saw the polar bears and what was going on, I mean, I was just curious. How did you get involved in this program? Oh, well, I mean, we'll talk about what the program <laughs> is, but as a how musician, started? yeah, well, how, how did it start? start for you? Yeah, I was living in LA at the time, and uh, was back in Denmark actually um, on a promotion tour. And my phone rang, and they say, well, we're looking for uh, someone called Christina, and Christina is my PR. And I'm like, well, she's not here, but who am I speaking to? And we're, we're calling from Greenpeace, and I'm like, okay. Well, uh, you know, she's not here. Anyway, I called out Christina and said, someone just called from Greenpeace and asked about you. Are, are we doing something with Greenpeace? No, not that I don't know of. And I said, okay, anyway, figure it out. She called out Greenpeace, and they couldn't figure out who made the call. <laughs> and I'm like, that is weird. And then there, the young guy that's on the phone is like, hey, by the way, if Ronnie is here, we actually have something going on downtown Copenhagen today about saving the Arctic. And I'm like, okay. And I, do you want to be on that? And I'm like, yeah. And, you know, if I can go there and they can brief me before I go into anything, I, at least I just want to go see what, see what it is. So I went down there, and er, this guy shows up that I've seen on TV like six months prior from Greenpeace and I recognize him and I'm like okay you know I it's so funny because I I saw you on TV and when I saw you on TV so he was a TV personality yeah and uh, working for Greenpeace as well okay so now was, like, he, was he on a local station or a cable station on, in, on Danish no, TV no he was he was Greenpeace at the time okay. like a spokesperson for them and I'm like it's funny that you just stood out to me six months ago and now you're here and we were just like okay this is so weird but it's got to be happening. You know, so. it's interesting because when I think about climate change, there, I have friends who made a film called Chasing Ice that won mm. up at Sundance mm -hmm. in, in, um, in 2010. I wrote an article for the Huffington, for the Huffington Post, mm. and I put the debate is over. And having been to Sweden, Denmark, Scandinavia, mm. I, always, I always look at, you know, climate change. Like, that area is like the front line. When the yep. water drops, yep. it hits their backyard. Yep. So yeah. these people have a yep. vested interest, yeah. you know, in basically curbing humanity's carbon footprint. Yep. Right. You know what I mean? And right. so I thought it was very interesting how Greenpeace, you know, Nordic, mm -hmm. yes. I guess, has taken the front reins. And, and so when you when you heard about the issue and the polar bears, mm -hmm. you know, what, what was it for you, Ronnie? I mean, was there anything? But for me, you know, I think it was like for anyone that uh, starts to realizing what's going on and what you just said is right. You know, they're going to take the front road, yeah. you know, uh, for, for what's going to happen. So when I realized all that, I was I was just like, I got to do something, you know, because I, I, I felt like when I walked through town, when I looked at people, I, I, I really thought about, do they really understand, understand. what's going on? And yeah. do we and I, here in America understand? We, yeah. We're so far removed mm -hmm. from the Arctic. Yeah. We, we feel like, okay, this doesn't affect us. Yeah, you but know, it affects the entire world. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a friend. He's got a, a, a platform, and he says, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. We don't see it, therefore it's not yeah. my problem. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's, you know, the thing I loved about that film, Chasing Ice, I we should have shown a clip, you know, was the idea was they put these cameras yeah. up in the Arctic, and they yeah. documented them, and you would just see the glaciers. And, and I, know I, we, I know we're going to we grab mm -hmm. some pictures, and I was looking at them, hoping they'll find those photos mm -hmm. of the glaciers and yeah. the bears. I mean, and you see the bears, and they, there's no ice. Where are they yeah. going to go? And it's I can so tell sad. you, <laughs> and I can tell you, it's funny you say, you know, I, I just believe that sometimes things come together the way it should be. Mm -hmm. And for this project to happen was just really something that, I think should happen you know I jumped into it I needed to educate myself I wanted to share my education with others the documentary you just mentioned was one of my you know some of the examples that I looked at now yeah, we can there, see the pictures there yeah and, and, and that's the example I even used for for Danish journalists 
because I said to them, if you don't believe the scientist, here are some guys right. that went up to the Arctic. They put up cameras. Yeah, that's they're not that scientists, but they're just showing it's it as it is. As it is. And I'm saying when, you look, when you look at an ice cap, the size of Manhattan I know. turn around in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. When you look at that, it scares the living crap out of you. No, I know. I mean, and the thing about it is, you know, it's so funny. We, I, I think we take our polar bears for granted. I yeah. mean, that was the thing we I do. saw. We, I, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, and it seems like we got a we got a shot of the polar bear right here. Yeah. I mean, when I saw the pictures, I hope they'll show the other pictures of the yep. polar bears. You yep. know, um, is. in the town. You know, we think that like we're just disconnected. Like they're a living species. Like if yeah. the ice goes, they will die. Yeah. Yes. They will die. They I mean, will we don't. Die. I mean, like. But you know, and not even that. I think there's. I don't know if they'll die or not. No, I don't, but, I don't but, know. You I know, should, I'm, but I'm, you know, no, you. will come you, and live with you. You, <laughs> you, you, you touch a point here. For a polar bear to live, it needs sea ice. It does. Yes. It walks across the sea ice in the winter, and it hunts. If it can't cross the sea ice, it can't hunt. Right. Okay? So that means that the polar bear has to live a life like the brown bear on land, which was never meant for a polar bear to live like that. But it will, sure, it will surely do that. Problem is, they will get closer to man. We already have the problem with brown bears in the California. Oh, God. We have, yes. we have brown yeah. yes. huge brown yeah. bear problem yeah. in yeah. California. So in Northern California, <laughs> yeah. attacking people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So even in because some even in Southern California, yes. they were showing the bears coming up. I think it was like in Huntington Beach or like yeah. um, in like uh, Laguna. Yeah. And like mm -hmm. they just get they're getting yeah. closer and closer every so year. So there's no, first of all, I'm looking at this. There's, there's the polar bears, there's the animal life up there. Number two, there's the amount of water. What are we going to do about the water? Have we prepared? What are we going to do? When I fly from Denmark to here, and anyone who's flown between Europe or the America, know that you'll fly three hours over ice. So in three hours, you're looking at nothing but ice. Mm -hmm. When you think about the vast distance of ice that is melting, this is more and bigger than anything we've ever looked at. Oh, yeah. No, I, I, we interviewed a couple of scientists back in the day when I made yeah. a film called Fuel, which, mm -hmm. which actually won at Sundance. Yeah. And we interviewed a bunch of climate scientists. And they basically they, say, they came out. They're like, look, in 20 years, New York, yeah. Florida, yeah. Um, North Carolina will mm -hmm. be flooded. Yeah. Because the amount of water that keeps rising, if it continues, yeah. all of that waterfront real mm -hmm. estate that they're paying pop dollar yeah. for it will be yeah. gone problem is today with the world is really that most of the people live by the shore yeah you know, I, I know back in the day we lived away from the shore because for some reason they just knew that sea level will always rise and fall mm -hmm. today we live on the water just look at malibu they are living on the water when we saw the tsunami in 2004 in three minutes over 200,000 people died. Gone. Gone. I know. You know, so we're talking something that moves so fast that we can do nothing about. And my worry is really that we don't take it seriously. Mm -hmm. You know, all the politicians, we, we, because, you know, I, I understand people that get, you know, when you, when you talk to them about it, they get like uh, flaky eyes. You know, they're, they're, they're just get disconnect. And I understand that because they think, well, what can I do? At the end of the day, well, I why do think should I do anything? Yeah, you but know, the other you know, Ryan, I'm ask. loving this. I just want to let you know that we're gonna cut to commercial. We're gonna come okay. back. I'm gonna ask you about your song yeah. that you wrote, <laughs> why you gave it to Greenpeace, and what that program yep. is. Okay. Okay. It's going quick, isn't it? Yep. It is. I know. And it's a great. <laughs> I'm so excited to have both you guys here. Okay. This is Greg Raven. We're on the green carpet at T Radio V. Peace. that's in the house. <laughs> Welcome, you guys. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank so you. excited about this. I first saw you guys at Sunset Strip. Happy Hollows. Happy hey. Hollows. How are you guys? Good. Good. Thanks for having us. <laughs> thank you. Gotta say. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having us. us. So we have Dear Boy in the house. Yes. I'm Keith. My name's Ben. No. This is Pepper. Hey, Pepper's Here's in the, the house. house. Yo. How are you, Pepper? How are you? We're, we're on. We're yeah. on. Live. Yes. Sort of. Round. Um, Queen Caveat, right? Yep. yep. There you Sorry, go. And over here, 
We in, have our guest. In studio. Yuna. Uh, DJ Yuna now. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. So yeah, no, I mean, that's so uh, <laughs> T Radio V. What did you play opposite Andy, Eric? Do you remember? Uh, Andy and I worked as uh, two employees at a network. Okay. Oh, you're and forgetting the other I, thing. I played, I played, I played a news anchor, and he played a reporter. Okay, but the other thing you did, the thing you did on the Andy Dick show, who did you play to Andy? Oh, uh, is is that to play my sister? You played his wife, Denise. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you played his wife. Yeah. So you what's wrong with that, Eli? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing's wrong with it. He's got it's a great just, range as an actor. It, you know? Yeah, it just was funny. Encounters with Eric and Eliza Roberts, Wednesdays from 2 to 4 p.m. on T Radio V. T Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Yeah. I like the music. Is that you, Ronnie? That's me. <laughs> All right. Or the Czech Symphony Orchestra. So, yeah, you know, it's interesting we talk about the great wake-up call. So you were just telling me about um, the Titanic analogy. Tell, tell me about it. How, I, yeah, how, do, you, how do you see like, this? No, I just, you know, I, I like to scale chunk things down when it's too fast, you know, too vast to understand. I just say to people, imagine you're on Titanic, you know, and the head of Titanic comes to you in the speaker and says, we'll just hit, a, hit an iceberg. First of all, you gotta decide: Am I gonna believe him or not believe him? That really, you know, that dictates where, which way you're gonna go. Either you stay in the restaurant or you're gonna go to the lifeboat. If you believe him, you go to the lifeboat. If not, you stay in the restaurant. And many people are like not believing the scientists we have today. I choose to believe and say, you know, I gotta believe them. They're better, you know, they have better knowledge than me. So I go to the lifeboat. And some people, you know, choose to say, hey, I want to play the part, part as the band. That's fine with me. I respect that. If you want to stand there and play your violin all the way down, that's good. For, you know, fine. I respect that. But just be clear about your choice. What is you're, your choice you're, here? You're playing the music for a cause well, now. <laughs> I, I just want to say a couple of things, though, just so we, because I kind of, we just got right into, yeah. you know, the show. So I kind of want to take a step back a little mm. bit, Ronnie, and just kind of like for the audience to understand, we're talking about, you know, the issue which is climate change, which, yeah. is, which is an amorphous thing. It's diffuse. You can't mm. see it. And how you as an artist aligned your political idea with mm. your with your song and yeah. your music to make a difference in the world and mm. what was the song that you chose it was built to last you know built to last yeah greenpeace said you know do you have a song that we can talk about and said you know i don't have any song that's about greenpeace and i don't want to write that song but i do have a song that's called built to last which the lyric really tells us we're built to last but we're living in a world made from glass and then the lyric mm -hmm. says we're built to grow but we're reaching for the world that we know. Mm. And that's it right there, right? That's the song there. Yes. Let's, just, let's just listen to it a little bit. We can grow like a drop in the Amazing. ocean. We can multiply and bring hope to sell from I just wanted to play a little bit of the song. I heard it. I was totally inspired. Now, you took part of the proceeds. Mm. And people go and they download it on iTunes, mm. and, 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 it, and, you, and you're writing a check back to Greenpeace, or does Greenpeace have it online on their website? How does that work? Everything works like the label when, you know, it sends a check, and once that check comes in the mail, hopefully from people downloading it, it goes to Greenpeace Safety Arctic Pro Project. Got it. And really, you can say the Safety Arctic Project, more than anything, is an information project telling us about what's going on up there. And I'm always trying, what I tried to tell you before, for me there's three steps to tell people 
For some people, it's the animals. Okay, and that's fine by me. I don't care what people, you know, what they care for. It's their thing. I'm saying there's animals there. There's also people living there. Then there's the water that's going to influence all other people around the world, even Americans. Then on top of that, there's the whole political game that most people, even I, don't, don't understand. We've got to understand one thing that's important. The Arctic today is owned by nobody. That means that it's a land that was never placed in somebody's hands. That means that the Russians has already gone out there and placed a flag on the bottom of the sea saying this is ours. <laughs> so if we survive, if we survive the water and everything, let's say we do that, then we have a different scenario because now we have Canada, the U.S., Denmark, including Greenland, the Russia, Norway, competing for, for a vast, amazing country up there with natural resources, oil, gas, everything you have up there. How are we going to do that? Are we just going to have a lottery or are we going to fight for it? And there I just say, let's say that we find natural resources up there. Russia already found gas and oil up there and they're starting drilling up there in oceans that are not legally theirs. This is the well, most is, best reason for an war yeah, that's at an any time. It's an international crisis. Yes. No, I understand. You know, it's really interesting, too. I want to go back what mm -hmm. you just said, though, about the Titanic. And as soon as I was processing about, yeah. you don't care if the person's sitting in the, in the restaurant or if you're on the lifeboat. Well, you know what's interesting is that that is a complete, I don't agree with that because, you know, at the end of the day, that is so selfish of us because we're not the only species on the planet. I mean, that's the, that's the bigger mm. thought process yeah. that really needs to occur. It's like, okay, got it. You're drinking in the restaurant, and you're also killing the other mm. species along the way. Yeah. That's – I got a problem with that. Yeah. I mean, and the thing about it, like when I saw the polar bears, yeah. I mean, this species has been around mm. just as long as – they have a right to be on I fully planet. understand, but, you know, you just got to understand me right when I say it. No, I understand you what know. you were saying, it, yeah. but I'm mostly saying for the people that are I, sitting I, in the I, restaurant. I fully agree. No, in the, in the restaurant, and I they're, fully and agree. They're not, and the, but they have an accountability I as have, a citizen of yeah. the world I agree. of how – they interact. It's like, it's, like, it's like someone right. turn around. It's like you can't just go pee in the middle of the street. No. There's a toilet. I have just <laughs> experienced, I've just experienced through my life that whenever you raise the finger and lecture people on what to do and not to do, that's not working for me. Well, well, yeah, so I that's got, why okay. I'm saying to them, at least one thing, do me this promise. Make a conscious decision on where you're going to be. Yes. Because right. if you do a conscious decision and I'm going to tell you the reason why, Mr. Jensen, you are not in the boat is because you made a conscious decision not to be there. Yeah, but they also, but even if they're not going to be in the boat, they yeah. still have to live within I the laws of, of, of the natural law, I how agree. we live. And they have to understand that you can't just, like like I said, you can't just go out into I the, agree. In, the, in the middle of the street and go to the bathroom. Right. It's an unhumane I thing. Fully agree. And so I think, you know, you're dealing with, you right. know, just the, 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 the I, I don't know, I, maybe I love the polar bears. I love the bears. But I, fully, I, I, I just but do. I, fully, I love I fully, the bears. I fully agree with you, but just so you understand, I have just experienced when you get people that question, yeah. make a conscious decision. Decisions. Yeah. Actually, good people, most of them, they, nine out of ten, is going to choose the boat. That's the funny thing. Okay. If you just get them to be conscious about it, then they will actually pick what you want them to pick. And, you know, I have to say one thing. When I was looking at the photos, and hopefully the, um, the guys will, will, will pull them out, and I was seeing the photos mm. of the activism part and, yeah. you know, and the bears and how you and how you mm -hmm. humanize the bear. Yes. When I saw the bear in the middle of the mm. street. That's where they're going to end up. I actually was like, can we, are we petting this thing? Is this real? Yeah. And what was do really, we have the video? And what, and what was interesting was we do have the video. What okay. was interesting was that it humanizes mm. us. I think we're yeah. just so yes, detached. Does. We're yeah. running, we're doing our jobs, we're yeah. just trying to make our living. We're not thinking, but I thought it was a very great campaign that they did up north. Yeah. It's very you know, powerful. It's very powerful. Do we have any of those images? He's still looking. It's very but powerful. Hopefully they'll, anyway, they'll and that's going. what we were trying to do with the music video because they said to me, okay, so how are you going to do the video for the song? And I say, you know, I think we should use what you're already building on. It's great. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll jump into the polar bear suit. Uh, with, jump with into the, the polar bear suit. <laughs> you know? And, He's doing and, everything for the cause. And I'm, and I'm like... <laughs> I said, you know, why let me be the polar bear? You know, first of all, I don't like artists that really oh, want to. Oh, so is that you inside the polar bear? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's that's right. Ronnie. <laughs> yes. So, so I said, you know, here's the video. You have an artist that wakes up in the morning. He goes to the kitchen in a suit. 
and then he puts himself in the polar bear suit and goes into the world and actually see the world through the polar bear's eyes. You know, I thank you for that because I did, and I and love this the shot. Hold the shot. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to. If we lose the Arctic. this yeah. shot, thank you, yeah. Greg Furman, the guy behind who yeah. pulls these shots. That I love that shot. Uh, it's when I saw that shot, I was like, "Oh my god, yep. you've just humanized!" Because the polar bear would never come on there. No, but I could just see his no. big paw, like, yeah. like, like you know, like wake yes. up. Yeah. And I'm telling like, you, and, and I'm and telling. And then it's like the, the the big elephant in the room. People are it just is walking around yes. and they're not even noticing him. And then yeah. the good thing so is, out of his I, environment. I can tell you, when we did the shoot in L.A., I walked around the streets of L.A. You know, and it was very hot in a polar bear suit. People actually came up to me and they wanted hawks and pictures and all that and it also showed me that people are actually much more affected about this again if you come back to the conscious choice mm -hmm. because then you start in interacting with them and telling them about it and they're like wow I didn't know I know you know and and that's why before I shoot people down I always give them a chance you know to be enlightened like I was you know Wait. what is this about we're well, also gonna say it's um, really interesting you know Ryan just to come back to the point about being enlightened, it's also it's on your it's in your backyard. Yeah, it is. It's in your backyard. It's almost like you know, like if if a tsunami came through, mm -hmm. you know, San Francisco. Yeah. It's in our backyard. How we react an to it. Here. You know, an earthquake when the earth shakes, we all mm -hmm. wake up in the morning. We yeah. all go on our Facebook, yeah. and it's like everyone feel that tremble, right? right? Yeah. yeah. So it's interesting. It's in your backyard, mm -hmm. but it's also something that's which is a much bigger issue. It's not just in your backyard. It could be in my front yard. It could be in your yeah. front yard. And that's the, that's yeah. the, 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 the and it dot. it will be. It will be. That's the thing. Is like when it hits the shores of New York, mm -hmm. yeah. when it hits the shores of Boston, when all of a sudden. Yeah. That's when it, people are going to wake when up. That's when all of a sudden it's going to become, you know, and unfortunately. And that's what, and that's what I'm afraid of. You well, know, it's, you know uh, look, look at how. I know we're not going to say anything is worse here, but just look at how 9-11 it had an impact on all of us. It mo it, it, then it, think about water, you know, yeah. overflowing. New York, you know that is what. What are we gonna do? It would. It would. It the financial would. power, everything. The people that live there, everything. I, I know. Right. You know. So you I, know. I mean, just thinking of that idea and that thought, you know, it just. Oh God, it just scares me. It scares me. But it's here. Yes. I mean, that's the thing. They say, you know, it's it's a matter of like, what are we? 2014. It's almost like they're saying like five years yeah. now. It's, yeah. it's it's literally right around the corner. And that is why I'm saying on the you know when we speak to politicians, I always say you know it's not about whose fault it is. You know we we need to act now, and we need right. to we need to make a decision at one point. Who are we going to believe? I know there's a lot of people out there saying ah oh, you know we got to be critical at it and whatever. But again, is that is that is this really an issue you want to be wrong about? You know, no. I, you know, because what the, what does that mean? <laughs> you know, so at some catastrophe. point, catastrophe. Yeah, that's what I mean. Well, it is you a know. catastrophe, and you know, here's the thing. I, I want to like we're gonna we're gonna come back. Mm. Uh, we're gonna cut to commercial before we cut though. You're gonna play a song, I heard, right? You wanna hear? Yes, I want to hear a song. So when we come back, uh, everyone's dialing in. We're on T Radio mm. V. This is Greg Reitman. We're on the green carpet. I got Ronnie Mars and Charisse Renault, extraordinary French producer. You're a French, right? No. No, but, you're, but it's <laughs> Renault's French. I have a French name, though. French but name. I'm all American. But we're going to come Lived back. in France for we're a while. We're going to come back, <laughs> and Ronnie's going to play a live show. This is Greg Reitman. Peace. This is awesome. Everybody, Sean Astin here. You may know me from Goonies, Rudy, The Lord of the Rings, but actually my calling is as a political radio show host. So I am proud to announce that I'm bringing my show, Vox Populi Radio, right here to T-Radio V, radio in TV. Thursdays, 12 to 2, live. Did I say that it's live? Live. Call in, tweet in, check in. It's going to be your show. everybody, Sean Astin here. You may know me from Goonies, Rudy, The Lord of the Rings. But hey, Cosmo here, inviting you to join me every Saturday, 11 a.m. PST, for another boozy rendition of Historic Holes. We uncover the history and the mystery, the dirt and details, and even some facts and figures behind your favorite drinking establishment. That could be a corner pub, a rickety saloon, an infamous bar or tavern. It's been around so long, it's bound to be a fire hazard. They are all history. Thank you.
I'm your host, Johnny Cosmo, every Saturday at 11 a.m. PST, right here at the future of online broadcasting. T, Radio V, and that's radio in TV. We are live. This is happening now. That's the Lonely Wild, and they're in studio. And we are here with... Hey, hello. Hey! We got a, a, a maximum capacity. I don't know if there's a fire hazard going on right now. <laughs> yeah, joined by the West Coast Celine Dion. Yeah. Alex Johnson. Oh my God. I just want to hear you sing all night. This voice. That's so nice. Well, thank you. Yeah, new regime. It's called Exhibit A. It's the latest release. The oh, magic yeah. of radio. <laughs> That's crazy. Let's get digital. Wednesday, 6 p.m. on T Radio V LA. Crazy Bone would never do this. <laughs> well, I guess. It <laughs> Windows. Windows. What a great name. It's a great song. Well, you know, a song again about uh, a guy looking out through the windows and looking at a world that stopped dreaming. Oh, that's deep. Yeah. And that's what I thought. I grew up in the 80s where I thought there were bands like Genesis and there was Queen. There was all these bands that wanted to do something. U2 was part of it, you know, when they came out early on. And I just think today, when I grew up and became an adult, all these new bands that comes out, a lot of them just stop dreaming. Where's, where's, the, where's, the, where's the will to do better? Where's the, where's the dream of a better tomorrow? And when I grew up, I took it, uh, honestly, I took it for granted. I thought all musicians were like that. And now today, I'm just like, why? Why are they not here? And I'm just sorry. My generation may be took it for granted that everything was just good and would just take care of itself. Yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm in that same generation as you. Yeah. I think that, yeah, I mean, we I wouldn't say we're an apathetic generation, but I think we're a um, we're a disjointed generation. We, we sort of inherited a yeah. world that we, didn't, that we didn't really understand, and now we've come to understand this world, and we're just, you know, I think it can be a little bit frightening. I think sometimes it's like, well, what can one person do? Yeah. You know what I mean? Can one person really make a difference? And, yes. and I'm of the belief Absolutely. that one person can. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I take my art and my filmmaking mm -hmm. very, very seriously. Mm -hmm. I, I try, you know, to get to connect the dots. But I'm, I, I just want to hear you play. Okay. I just, you know, I just, I see this guitar and what, what are you going to play, Ronnie? Lost my way. never had a live performance on our show. This is so cool. If I let you know what I've been thinking, would you know these words to say true? I love you all the way. I find it hard to say I'm sorry. I find it hard to say, but it's the truth. Yeah, I lost my way I know it would make you happy If I say that I'm alright It seems that my smile has vanished To say it's here, oh, that's a lie Would you let me deep inside of you? 
And trust me all the way I find it hard to say Don't worry Please don't think it's always been about you You're not the one to blame I know it would make you happy If I say that I'm alright I know it will make you happy If I say that I'm alright If I say that when I hear you play <laughs> your words just you know it, it makes you think you yes, know very thought provoking very thought provoking artist you know I mean I love your artistry um, honestly I think it's because I and thank you by the way yeah I'm not from America, so for me, learning. What does that mean? You're not from America. It, it means that I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm from Denmark. So for me, not speaking English growing up, I had to learn the language. Oh, I see. So yeah. I had to sit there and really dig deep because I didn't want it to come across like, "Hey, I just love you." I wanted to say something that you know took the feelings into the language. I honestly, I do think I worked maybe harder. Because it was difficult. You have to. I mean, I have to. yeah, you have to. I mean, it's like learning a different language. It's a whole different. It's interesting. I never thought about that either. As as, a, as an artist, taking the words and putting meaning. Because you really, you know, as I listen to you, my my head just goes somewhere. I was like, God, like yes, our world. Definitely. How are we living? You know, in the music. And the, I love music. I appreciate music, it. Thank you. Because music just takes us to a place, you know, that we all want to go to. Yeah. You know, I mean, we all want to dream, and, and we love the dream. And, and so what's your dream? I mean, at the end of the day, Ronnie, I mean, what would you like for us to ha Well, I mean, Ooh, what can do we... Do we have time? <laughs> what can we... No, but seriously, what can we do, you know, to support the cause? I mean, what is it now that you think that... What's the takeaway that someone in America and Greece and, you know, the World Cup's going on right mm. now, everybody's into the soccer, yeah. you know, we're on a stage. What would you want? What, what would you want people to do? I would like to see a world putting down its boundaries, knowing that we can all still be different, but still live together as friends and in common peace. And that may sound like a hippie tale out of the 70s, but that's really what I want. That's what I would love for people, you know, to create that world. And I do see today when I, again, you know, I grew up, you know, I came from a generation that were hippies and out of the 70s. So I took it, as I said to you before, I took it a little bit for granted. Well, they already figured it out. That's going to happen. You know, I don't have to, anything to worry with. But I do see today where polit political climate is changing, where economic climate is, cha is changing, that there are actually work to do because th it's, like, it's like this effect, you know. The pendulum, or what it's called, you know, is swinging the other way. Yeah, the yin and, yang. And so I just, I just love being part of what you're doing. We're what we're doing here. We're having a conversation about stuff that I just think is a dialogue we as human beings on this planet need to have. We need to have that dialogue. So you, so you would hope that like that people would actually come to, to I guess to to, to understand that climate change is real. Yeah. And to realize... And that they're a part of it. They're that part they of are it. a part of it. They're a part of it. And so the answer is... That they are part of the change. Got they it. are part of the change. If we all sit down and say, I'll, I'll leave it to my neighbor, nothing's going to happen. We and it's are great part that, that... Well, I, I look at it as... I mean, what you're, what you're indirectly saying is it's, there's a form of accountability. Yeah. That we're all right. accountable. It's like you know, for the for the for the greater whole of what's going on. In on the world. a smaller level, uh, I yeah. go in and I see your documentary. I go back. The first thing I do when I go to the supermarket is just being a little bit more responsible, thinking, okay, if I buy that product, I actually support something for the better mm -hmm. rather than that product. 
I know that my dollar makes a has difference. a value. Yes. It makes a difference. On so many levels. On so you know? many levels. Yes. Right. What I say to my kids, what I talk about with my what colleagues. What car you drive. What car If I you drive, drive a hybrid, exactly. if you drive a gasoline. Yes. Um, and, and today, we have, we have economic power. Whenever we go buy something, we support a development in the world. And we're also, de- we're also support an institution. We are. Yeah. And it's about being aware. And, you know, with artists like Ronnie, raising the awareness is so important. You know, and he's an artist with a cause, an artist with a message. Oh, he's also an amazing artist, too. I mean, it's the fact that... Enough. <laughs> well, the fact that you've, you've, you've managed to, you know, wither the storm, you write good lyrics, you know, you've even... You know, you've you've even learned to humor your humor yourself by wearing the polar bear outfit. I, honestly, I, I, I think like yeah. honestly that for <laughs> me when I saw the photos of the polar bear, I was like, that's him inside yeah, the but polar you know, bear. But, it, but it's because again, I look at some artists today, and I was just love for those artists. You know, that was my way of saying, you know, let me get my hands dirty. I can't support something if I'm not willing to jump in the ocean. You know, so I had to jump into the polar bear and say, "Let me part of, let me be part of it." And what you've done, I don't, I just, I, I mean, for me now, I think everyone looks at the polar bear. will look at it in a whole different way. Is you've, hum- and I said it before, but you've humanized, humanized it. it. Yeah. You've really taken it to a whole other level now. I mean, because the polar bear would never walk in the streets. The no. polar bear would never go in front of Congress. The polar bear. He's become the voice for the polar bear. I was going to say, you be, you've given the, a, 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 a voice, mm-hmm. actually, yeah, for the polar bear. And you've done it in a way with your music and your song that people can go and they can listen to it and they know. And, you know, okay, I got it. You don't care about yourself, but at least do it for the for the polar bear. For I mean, the polar bears or yeah. for your neighbor or, you know, even for the born, you know, or for the people that are going to be born, you know, next generation. So I want, we're going we're gonna to come back. Mm. I want to talk. I saw a lot of photos on the activism. Yeah. You know, there were tons of yeah. photos on them. They were all decked out. Um, I'm very curious to know what it was like as a participant, as a musician, as an artist, yeah. and also some of the, all the other, and there were some celebrities I saw in some of the photos and how you got involved in that. Okay. Yep. Great. So we're going to cut. This is Greg Reitman on the green carpet at T Radio V. Peace. Yay. Hi, this is Slim Jim Phantom, and you got the big beat. We're going to take this music into the 22nd century. We deal exclusively in rockabilly music. Elvis Presley, Jerry Lee Lewis, Carl Perkins, Chuck Berry, Little Richard, Richie Valens, Wanda Jackson, Janice Martin, the Everly Brothers, Johnny Cash, and everybody else. Thank you so much for supporting the Big Beat here on T Radio V. I'm Zoe Williams. And I'm Dr. Mark Goulston. I'm Jeff Brown. And we make up the Zoe What Morning Show. You can find us here on TRadioV.com every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I make you think. He makes you laugh. And if I get a chance, I'll help you change. Or make you cry with his attempts at humor. Radio in TV. Can you relate? We'll make it happen. Look at Jeff. What you doing? Were you mumbling to yourself? <laughs> hey, back there mumbling. To them. To them. I want my MDB. Yeah. I want my MDB. <laughs> I love me some MGB. Of course they do. <laughs> it's the Michael DeBar Show, Thursdays at 3 p.m. on T Radio V. I think he really loves me. Hi, I'm Katie Cleary. And I'm Kristen Renton. And we're from World Animal News. World Animal News discusses animal issues from around the world. News that matters. Watch World Animal News every Thursday at 11 a.m. Find out everything about me on Twitter at Katie underscore Cleary and at Kristen Renton. Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Read your faith in a coffee cup. Okay.
okay, Ronnie. Now you got my juices going. <laughs> you know, I feel like you know I'm a good man. You know, doing yeah. good in the world. You know, mm. it's it's um, this is Greg Wright, and we're back on the green carpet with Ronnie Mars and Sharice Renault. Um, you know, I, I get it. I mean, I understand what you're saying. It's like you know, you wake up in the morning, and it's like okay, it's like we have a limited time on the planet, and it's like we have to make a choice what we're going to do and how we're going to do it, and the mm. idea of you know. Um, doing good in the world mm -hmm. and making a difference in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of people, you know, just want to get ahead. I think, yeah. and I think what happens is, and I've seen it with a lot of my friends, you know, like they hit their 40s and their 50s and they look back and they say, What did I do? What did I do? What mm -hmm. do I, I mean, that's the only thing I always say, you know, it's like just enjoy the road, enjoy what you're doing, enjoy the people along the way. Mm -hmm. And, um, and if everybody just had that mindfulness, like we really thought about doing good in the world, God, mm. what a better world we'd be in. And I have to come from the belief that that good is infectious. Yeah, it is. I, it that's is. how I see the world. I look it at it, yes. I mean, it it's, ju it's just infectious. You know, I'm always smiling and I'm always happy. Mm. And people are looking at me like, why is he always so happy? Because I feel good. Like yeah. I wake up in the morning yeah. and I know I'm doing my part. And that's all you can do, you know? And I know a lot of people that are depressed or taking, uh, uh, you know, medicine or whatever can say, well, it's easy for you to say. <laughs> but listen, <laughs> but you, but you, but you, you touch, you touch base on it. It's a choice. And I'm not saying that you're going to be super happy tomorrow saving Africa or something because you're going to be happy. But you might if you try it. That's what I mean. Well, it's also I something too. I want to like just want to cut mm. to those activism folks because yeah. I tell you something. When you see those photos, yeah, you feel good mm. about it. Yeah, you yeah. actually they, you they're see motivating. You, know, you see the people and you see what's going on and you see the sense mm. of community and you're walking out yeah. and you're saying you know something like yeah see that it works it's uh and what does this say in english what is this what is it's it? not it said stop gasprom and gasprom is the russian oil company that does already are uh, uh, digging for oil up in the arctic oceans oh so now we got to deal with the russians coming in yep they're already <laughs> doing it there it says of yes. course free their arctic 30 there were 30 people up there trying to stop or making awareness about their uh, the russian and they were jailed all in uh, russia and oh, so the Russians put him, Putin put him in jail. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we. And by the way, th th I just want to just stop and just pause it and say, did that hit your news this morning? No, that they never hit American <laughs> I mean, news. I mean, I'm sorry. It's like, yeah. your news now. Like, did that hit yeah. the news? it to you. You know what I mean? Like this, I always feel like yeah. we, the, when we're on the green card, we're always bringing mm. new news. Yeah. Like yes. that's new news. Yeah. So the 30 people never had a trial. They were put behind bars and they said, they actually said that those 30 people were uh, terrorists. So they were putting under the law in Russia as being terrorists. And their whole thing was that, well, these people... Are those the people, people that are in yeah, jail? I was yeah. trying to figure out yeah. these images. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's so interesting because I was pulling the images more. I'm like, what is this And there story? we have the head of Greenpeace, and he's down in Brazil, but there is activism for... Because yeah, you were at the Rio 30 summit. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. Um, so, yes, about the Safety Arctic campaign, we had the 30 uh, people that was taken by the Russians, and that we just have Who to... Who is this one? I want to know what that see, was. See, that is a politician down in Brazil. <laughs> see <laughs> how they see those people there. Um, no, I armed I, and ready. I, you know, when people ask well, me, well, it's interesting. I need to go back to that one. Yes. Before we see the oil, and can you cut back? Look at that one. It's very interesting. You see the grenade, <laughs> yeah. right? You got to see the detail of all of it. I just right? got to say, when people ask me about Greenpeace, you know, there's even things maybe in a in an organization like Greenpeace that I can disagree on. But what I really respect about these guys is that they're hands on. And when I say hands on, they're so good at going out there and doing stuff that really doesn't harm anyone, but makes awareness about what it is that we need to think about. And I love people like that. Some of these people I've met, I'm telling you, there are people like you and me and Cherise. They jump into a suit, they jump in a boat, and they go to an oil platform. This is mothers and fathers. This is no ordinary people that put their own life at risk for sending a message. Well, I also believe that we're, you know, when you get to a point where you're awakened, like I always see like sometimes you're on a car and you see the car stop yeah. and all the cars just keep going by. Yeah. And I'm like, sometimes I'll actually stop the car and like mm. pull over and say, are you okay? Exactly. Right. You right. know, and like I would probably, the guy's like, you know, 
thousands of cars pass yeah. by, and he's like, no, I'm no, good. I yeah. Just want to make sure. You know, it's yeah. like, do we ever just check in with other people? Exactly. You know, I don't think we That's realize right. we actually need other people. I did that in L.A. Always. once, and you I'm don't telling stand you, alone. there was two people sitting in a car, and when I jumped out of my car and I, you know, I start pushing their car, the old like, guy in the car said, who are you? Where are you from? And I'm like, hey, by the way, I'm Ronnie. I'm from Denmark. Do they do that in Denmark? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know, but your your life is in danger here. We got to do something. You know, you can't just let it go. Well, you, you are a friendly species, though. The <laughs> Danish and the Swedes and the Finns are very friendly people. Um, very friendly people. And, and and interesting, like, I mean, do you feel now that you're an activist? I never, st- I mean, do you call mm. yourself an activist? No, I don't. I just call myself a concerned dad. I am a concerned dad. Concerned citizen of the world. Yeah. No, but that's interesting. You're a dad and you care about your children and and the world that you're leaving. And I can't. And when my kids sometimes like anyone's kids, they come up with beautiful, brilliant questions. questions. And I'm like, sometimes I just got to say to them, well, you're completely right. We should do something about it or something. How do you explain to your kid why you wear the polar bear suit? I say to them, I tell them as it is. I said, you know, I'm sorry, honey. We messed up, but we were not meaning to do any harm. And there's stuff we need to do now. And they're like, yeah, yeah, Dad, we got to do it. They want to be like out there and say, hey, you got to do something about it. And that's what's loving about kids. Their thought process from going from what they want to act on it is not that long. Next show, we'll bring the kids in with their polar bear suits on. Yeah. Wow. But, you know, I got to tell you. I'd love to see that, by the way. We have, you great. know, a French artist actually just did a piece in France. Um, of a, It's called Politicians Discussing Global Warming. I don't know if you've seen it. I haven't. And it's a, a, a bunch of suits standing together, and they're in water up to the chest. And it says, uh, polit- Politicians Discussing Global Warming. And that is what we're doing right now. We're discussing this while it happens while we should maybe be acting more. Oh, I, I, I mean, I'm under the belief, like, you know, during World War II, we took our automa- our automotive uh, manufacturing and we created, like, a wartime, you know, we, 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 yep. we went to war and we, right. we changed our manufacturing base. I think we need to do the same thing with, 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 you know, with our economy. We need to just change the, make everything renewable, clean the air, like, really circumvent a lot of things and just mm. say, look, this is what so. Um, but that, you know, what, what that requires, though, is um, um, the, the power of the people. It also requires a very strong president. I mean, Obama, I mean, we, and, and, and he we, just we, didn't, he didn't do what he needed to do. You no, know and, I mean? and, we, and we just got to, we just got to understand this is possible. This is very important. Well, fact this to is understand. not just possible. This has to happen. Yeah, it has to happen. And it, it's, 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 um. Yeah. It's it's bigger than life. It's like what you just said. Do you want to see the image of New York underwater? Yeah. Is that what it's going to take? Like the way the 9-11 towers mm-hmm. came down? It woke us up. Yeah. Right. You know, it definitely, we look at 9-11 now yeah. and we say, okay, this is what's so. Do we now have to see us underwater to have that next, mm. you know, turning point? And, I, you know, and unfortunately... Hopefully not. I, hopefully not. We I was going to say, like, thank God, you know, what like a creative this. way to, like, you know, bring us back to humanity. Yeah. And not even just for our own selves, but for the other species that are also here. And thank God we right. just had, or we have, you know, you doing your documentary, I'm doing stuff, a lot of great people are doing other stuff. And there was just this documentary that started on TV as well from the guy that created Titanic. Um, James Cameron, mm-hmm. you know, he uh, created. He's not just the guy, just yeah. so you know. No, I know, <laughs> but in my <laughs> he's the creator, he's the dude, and, uh, he's the he's dude the of dude. Avatar, the creator no. of a mini. <laughs> but, it, but anyway, uh, what a great films. thing! What a great thing! You know, for him, he could have created a, another blockbuster. Instead, he creates a documentary about global warming. You know, it has Matt Damon in there. It has a lot of people, and actually, what it talks about is it goes out there and it researches global warming already having effect in different parts of the world. You know, so that just started on TV. So, and your radio show as well. It, you know, this is baby steps. We all need to do our part, but it's all coming together. Well, it's if also, we do our small you know, part. I definitely yes. want to get that image, though, of Absolutely. New York underwater, you know. <laughs> like Hopefully really not. W- no, but no, but I do because I want people to see because I think it's like yes. if you put it in their minds and mm-hmm. they understand what's at stake and it's their homes, they that they work. Think about it. If you spent... 40 or 50 years working working your 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 took us off for mm-hmm. the man and then all of yeah. a sudden it's gone because the water's rising maybe you'd act differently or today Absolutely. or today you're looking at a city which they saw uh, said in that documentary in texas you know where people had 
to leave because, you know, the meat plant uh, factory, you know, they closed down because of a drought. Wow. So, you know, anyway, we I'm need to do our part. I think, getting getting, I think I'm getting my cue that I think we're <laughs> wrapped. I just want to oh thank God. you, Cherise. Thank, thank you, you, Ronnie. Thank you so much. This was a great show. Support the cause. How can we, how can we dial in? Where do we go? www.ronnie-morris.com. Fabulous. And if you're interested in booking Ronnie for a any show. appearances, shows, oh. engagement, go to artistagroup.com and you can email us, Charisse at artistagroup.com, C H A R E S C H R A I S S E at artistagroup.com. This is Thank Gre you so much. Thank Greg, you guys. For this us. is Greg Reitman on the green carpet every Tuesday at 2 at T Radio V. Peace. You are watching T-Radio V, radio and TV.